Welcome to this special edition of Carlos and Lisa. We are calling it Mom Talk. I'm Jill Simonian, and we're gonna get talking today because a lot of us say that parenting is really, really hard and that it's too much to keep up with and it's complicated, but today I'm asking, is it really that complicated? <laughs> we're gonna be breaking it down, cutting through all the mess, cutting through the nonsense that so many of us moms and dads are tired of dealing with. And we're gonna be starting with one of my dear friends, Dr. Tanya Altman. I want to clap for you. Pediatrician, you. author, founder of Calabasas Pediatrics. You're gonna set us straight. We've talked about every single issue that you can think of with parenting, but you're a mom of? Three boys. Three boys. <laughs> Teenagers down to starting kindergarten again. So you have been there, done that, you know everything. Yes. Yes, okay, uh, let's let's break it down to, I wanna say the very beginning of parenthood because my girls are still, they're nine and seven and a half right now, but I've noticed that we have this collective fear, fear that comes with parenting in this day and age. So many of us parents are super scared when we find out we're expecting. We're super scared of the baby. We're scared, what do I do, what do I do? We Have you noticed this trend as a pediatrician? Are we scared? So yes, I have <laughs> noticed that. New parents are scared. And um, the reason is that generations ago, you had your mom and your grandparents and everyone around in your community. And now people are often waiting until later um, in their careers to have kids. They're moving away from their immediate family. They have no support and all all they see every day is all these amazing, perfect pictures of what it's like to have a baby mm. on social media, right? So nobody posts, I'm up at 2.30 in the morning and I'm exhausted and my nipples are hurting and the baby pooped all over the place, right? Which happens. So you, it does happen. And so you you see like all of these things like, oh my goodness, what if my child doesn't get into college, you know, when they're just born and you think you don't have to worry about yet. And so I'm always trying to calm the parents down in my practice and saying, let's take it one step at a time. You can do this, it's okay. People have been raising kids for hundreds of thousands of years. It is, it is. and uh, the way that I have sort of come to look at it and that I try to combat every single day and just the way I wake up and think about things is we seem to not want to tap into our own confidence I think as women and mothers, I, I mean, you know, like think of all these moms who have gone into these high powered careers and they're yes. confident and they get the job done. But then for whatever reason, when there's a baby, all of a sudden that confidence diminishes and it's like, what happens? How do you encourage moms yeah. of any age of kid to be confident? So, you know, a lot of it's just using your instinct. You know, you, you can do this. It's okay. They're not breakable. Mm -hmm. Babies are very resilient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have all your resources. You know, in my practice, it's very personal. So moms can text me and FaceTime me and email me anytime. So I'm their backup. Um, so they're always reaching out to me when they have questions. But there's communities out there that can help you. There's so many resources today mm -hmm. not to scare you and make you worry that you're not going to be as perfect as they are, but to help you and support you. Okay, oh, scary. Okay, we need to talk about scared because one of the resources that comes to mind is Facebook. And we think, oh, yes. it's great. There's a community. There's these groups that you can join and get support. But I think my theory based on nothing is that Facebook is the actual demise of a lot of the confidence that we should be feeling. We, you see, think, think of it this way. I'm going to ask you, put your doctor hat on now. A lot of parents will post medical conditions, bruises, chap lips, rashes, you name it. They post yes. it in these Facebook groups and they're asking other mothers or dads for advice and everyone chimes in, oh my gosh, you have this disease, blah, 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 blah. Is this a problem? So I see that because I'm on all these groups, you know, as a mom, and so I try not to be there saying, ask your pediatrician, ask your pediatrician. Ask but that's the right answer, ask but the pediatrician. Most of the time it is. I mean, I think in some ways, you know, I feel bad for these moms. Like, why do they have to go ask other people about this condition? Why can't they call their pediatrician? Or why can't they look it up in a reliable, accurate source? Right. So in some ways, communities are good, but at other times, they get a lot of information that's not always accurate out there, and it can scare them, and they can do the wrong thing. So hopefully it's not dangerous, but sometimes it can be a little crazy, you know, put butter on that or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> Olive oil. I'm Armenian. I put some kind of oil on it, right? It'll work. So, so your recommendation, do not post medical conditions on Facebook. Can, can I say that? I, I think that would be best, not medical conditions. Now, if you want to say, you know, I'm feeling overwhelmed today because yeah. I woke up and this child was having a tantrum and I got this one late to school and then I, you know, had trouble, you know, I couldn't pump any milk and the baby pooped all over the place. <laughs> what do you suggest? 
best I do. I think that's fine because that's mm -hmm. where you're looking for emotional support and help. But you don't want to say, my child is having bruises popping up all over the place. What do you think I should do? Well, that could be very serious. That could be something like leukemia. You must call your doctor right mm -hmm. away or go to the emergency room. Okay, okay. Doctor's orders, no medical conditions on Facebook. I like that. Uh, yes. Here, uh, something else to put you on the spot. Are we pushovers as parents? A lot of us who set the rules, set the bedtimes, say we're not giving smartphones, and then we just the rules just go away. Are we pushovers? Do you want us to toughen up? So, you know, I think parents today are trying so hard to be their kid's best friend. And so in some ways, you really need to be a parent. You have to set the rules. Kids will push the limits and keep pushing you. And then if they know that you're gonna cave, they'll keep pushing you. So you have to at some point be the parent and say, you know what, that's it. These are the rules in the house. This is what I said. Now you can always go back at any point and change the rules. Sometimes I'll sit my kids down and say, you know what, mommy made a mistake. After thinking about it, we're gonna do it differently. Okay. Um, or you know what, I gave you um, social media at too early of an age, I realized, and now we're gonna take it away for six months and see how we do. Okay. My kids actually don't have social media yet, but that was the first good. thing that Good, thank head. you, yes. Okay, good, so then, it, it, answer is yes we are pushovers yes really quickly what is your biggest because we all have fails what is your biggest fail fail as a parent that you had to fix well I have three boys 14 12 and 5 and I'm not perfect I mean I fail all the time and I just try to correct it and tell them about it um <laughs> a few weeks ago we were at a school play and my husband took home the little guy and I stayed late with the older one and we each thought we were taking home the middle son and then after we got home about 20 minutes later my cell phone went off and I'm like why is he calling luckily <gasps> he does have a cell phone for emergencies like this and I said to my husband isn't he upstairs asleep oh and he goes gosh. no you were supposed to bring him home <laughs> Luckily, we live a mile from the school, and one of us went back and got okay, him. Okay, that makes it so many. And the teachers and the principal were all laughing hysterically. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Tanya Altman. Okay, thank you so much. I love you. I adore you. You can connect with Dr. Tanya at on all over social media, Dr. Tanya Altman. Thank you so much. We will be right back. Still ahead, what the filmmakers of Frozen 2 are saying about some of the heavy themes in the movie and how to talk to your kids about those topics. That's next. Do you have family movie nights on your couch? We do. The highest grossing animated movie of all time and quite possibly the most popular is now available on digital home entertainment and Blu-ray. Disney's Frozen 2 took fans on a brand new adventure with Elsa and Anna filled with love, loss, fear and grief. It was a lot for me and I talked to the filmmakers about the intense storyline for kids. Promise me we do this together, okay? I promise. I don't think that anyone would have done this project if there hadn't been an ambition to grow it up and make it about change and maturity and how difficult change is, but that it's something you have to go through. This movie has so much in it, so many layers, the grief, the grit, the loss, the goals, everything. At, was there at any point when you were watching prior, you thought, ah, oh, this might be a little bit too much for kids? No, you know, actually, I mean, we talk about it, that, that balance. So there's always a, a balance you want to strive for. But, uh, you know, we grew up on Pinocchio, you know, fairy tales. Yeah. Fairy tales go there, and that, they go there partly to help kids cope with things. Hey, guys! So I think we felt as long as um, there was something meaningful for them, some of the parts that might be over their head, that's okay too, it speaks to adults, but that's life. And so we really felt strongly that um, this journey and going from Frozen 1 and watching the things you tackle as you grow up um, had a place with kids. And, and we you know, fortunately um, have seen that kids have been able to navigate even the tougher moments. Kids oftentimes handle things better than parents anticipate them to handle. Yeah, that's uh, very true. Uh, when we watch the film, you know, with with a full audience, including kids, you know, they're riveted yeah. to the screen. And and yes, there are scary moments, but they're very they're very focused on what's going to happen next. And I think you know, fortunately, our movies are really a lot about hope, so it always yeah. ends uh, well. And they, and they're smarter. They even with um, the Olaf, you know, right. scene and everything. 
we asked kids and uh, young kids, and they're like, well, I knew something was, it's Disney, something was going to happen differently. I just wanted to see how. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're more savvy, they're already more savvy moviegoers than I think we give them credit for. I love happy endings. So we're going to unpack all of this right now because joining me is licensed marriage and family therapist Keisha Amesqua. Like I said, this movie was a mm -hmm. lot for me, but are the filmmakers right? Are, am I the wimp? Well, I, <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, I think it's not so cut and dry. It's not such an easy black and white answer when you're talking about is something appropriate or not in terms of a, a movie for kids. I think we have general guidelines that we follow, right? It's a G or it's a PG, but I think the most important thing is you have to know your own child mm -hmm. and what their temperament is. And I think that's kind of what we're talking about in these situations. So in the situation where, for instance, I took my daughters and then my sister was also mm -hmm. there with mm -hmm. her daughters and her older daughter surprisingly started crying mm -hmm. in the middle of it saying, I don't like this, I'm scared. Now, mm -hmm. sh I'm not gonna tell you what happened, but mm -hmm. should my daughter have taken my niece out of the theater or should she have maybe said it's okay just watch it yeah and made her cope your thoughts well i i really am a big proponent of talking to kids about what they're experiencing what they're feeling and you know, i think too often we want to kind of maybe shield them mm -hmm. from these kinds of topics about loss or grief um and instead of just explore, what is this bringing up for you? Can we talk about it and, and see what that is? If it's truly I'm scared of something and that's going to turn into nightmares, then yes, remove the child and really protect them. But if it's something that this is a hard topic and, and you know I don't have the words, then maybe it's an opportunity to have that conversation with that child. Okay, yeah, because I'm a big believer in talking about mm -hmm. things too. And um, something that you and I talked about also, I, you know, personally with me, mm -hmm. this movie, it took me two times mm. to see it, but mm -hmm. I think it did a great job. Your thoughts, did yeah. you like it or not? I loved it, you know, and, yes. and I, yeah, I, I really okay. did. My kids loved it, but my kids are younger. I have six, four, and two, and um, the, they, I think it really was, like they just liked the, the lights and the magic and that kind of thing, and those other concepts really didn't hit for them because mm -hmm. they're too young. Um, but it did bring up some interesting things. We got to kind of start having those conversations because they're starting to be curious about those things. Interesting. Well, something to do. Now that it's on home entertainment, so we yes. can tackle these things on our exactly. family couches. Right? right, right. My kids can't wait. So we'll be watching over and over, and I'm sure that will bring up more conversation. As everyone grows, right? right. The movie right. It's the movie that grows with us. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Thank you yeah. for talking about that. You made me feel better at the very least. Oh, good. Okay, good. good. Not good. a wimp. Not a wimp. <laughs> Not a wimp. Right. Thank you. All yeah. right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Next, you know her as a TV host and best-selling author. Samantha Harris is showing us what to put in that morning smoothie to make it the healthiest yet. Okay, she is best known from her days as co-host of ABC's Dancing with the Stars and as a longtime staple on Entertainment Tonight and Extra. And she's also a certified health coach and author of the best-selling book. I'm going to point to it right here. Your healthiest healthy. I want to applaud right now for Samantha Harris. Hey, Yay! Well, that's why I require my family to also applaud every time I walk uh, you in the should. door. You no. should. You should rightfully yeah, so. Wait. Well, as moms, they should applaud for us on a daily Thank basis you. for all that Thank we do. Thank you. Right? Thank I'm just you. saying. Yes. If yes. we can't appreciate ourselves, who's going to appreciate it. I, nobody. That's why we started. <laughs> and you're a mom of two girls. Yes. I have two daughters too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's super hard to keep ourselves, I, I want to say eating the right things and drinking the right things because my energy goes a lot. Right. And right. I'm assuming the same thing happens to you. And you've been on this health journey, mm -hmm. which I want you to tell everyone why you started this health journey. I know your story, but give us. I will. Well, you, and also you touched on something, which mm -hmm. is we as moms, we forget, we take care of everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. We are always putting ourselves at the bottom of the to-do list, but self-care, I like to say, is selfless. Because if we it don't is. take care of ourselves, we're not going to be around long enough to take care of those who need us to be there for them. It's true. And so I think having that as sort of a, just in your mind, 
helps a lot when it means going for a walk in the middle mm -hmm. of the day to just get out and shake out the crazy stress or get to the gym or get a massage or do that mud mask you've been wanting yes. to do or a night out with the girlfriends, the mud right? mask, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. I was painting a mud mask actually on my daughter last night. She's like, can I do the mud mask? I'm like, sure, no, but you know that. what though? That's part of it to start teaching our girls this is a part of your life to start mm -hmm. taking care of yourself for the long run. That's right. a great point. And well, and so then you said my health journey. Mm -hmm. So uh, at 40, I was blindsided by a breast cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I was the healthy and fit one among yeah. my friends and family that they would you know, literally tease and taunt me because of how I ate. And you have the abs. <laughs> I've seen the magazine covers from back in the day. Hello. <laughs> Back in the day, come on, hey, hey, now. hey, check out my Instagram. Hey, now. Now. You're right, you should got me. You're right, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But you know what, look, I'm 46 right mm -hmm. now. I feel stronger, healthier, and more fit than I ever have. Five and a half years post-cancer um, diagnosis. And the thing is that I thought I was eating the right way that was healthy. I thought I was working out for the right reasons. I thought that I was taking care of my health. And what I found out, because only five to 10% of breast cancers are actually hereditary. And wow. that was sort of, sort of shocking to me because I waited for that answer of like, oh, well, it's genetic, so I, you right. know, I couldn't avoid it. Sure. But we all have genes, possibly cancer genes in our bodies that can be sort of switched on or switched off by outside factors. So what I found through my research, because I'm a journalist by trade, right. was there's no one comprehensive action plan out there to tell me what I needed to do. And so um, with my research, I found out that it's what you put in on and around your body mm -hmm. that affects your overall well-being, that triggers different cancer genes to turn them on or off, that affects your chronic disease risk. So we're talking about type 2 diabetes, heart disease, the number mm -hmm. one killer for women. And so I wrote Your Healthiest Healthy really as an action plan for others to have a, a step up. And it's not just about, and we're gonna talk about nutrition today, yeah. but it's not just about what you're eating and how you're eating and feeding your, your body. It's how you're feeding your mind and your soul through meditation, through yoga, through girlfriends like we just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But it's also about getting the toxins out of what's on your body. So. You know, both of us. And I've never oh. heard that before. I've never heard anyone talk about getting the toxins out of what's on your body. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, then oh, I'm, glad, I, then I'm glad I brought it up here. <laughs> uh, because, well, because really, look, both of us spent our careers in a makeup and hair chair. We're getting shellacked with God knows what. Yep. Hairspray. Hair, I mean, between the hairspray friend. and the makeup mm -hmm. and the, the toxins that are lurking in our beauty bag are really frightening when you, we're talking about endocrine disruptors, um, there are lots of carcinogens and things that are not really supposed to be on our body. As you do it layer after layer, women put about 12 different personal care products on their body mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Right. When you add up all the individual ingredients, there are about 168 different ingredients that are going on our body every day on average as a woman. So when you think about that, you wanna make sure that the choices you're making are healthy ones, safe ones, clean, non-toxic. So in the book, I list a lot of like the keep off your bod list, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. just, you know, we're talking about parabens and phthalates and all these things that they're names and words that you don't even wanna know, but you need to be an empowered consumer. Right. And that can be another segment we can do I know, another we'll time. Do, we'll do another one because yes. I wanna find out yes. the, the, all of these ingredients here, are these meant to then reverse some of those toxins and get it, get them, yeah, get them out? Absolutely, and to help as, as um, antioxidants, so fighting the free radicals inside mm -hmm. your body. Free radicals can lead to inflammation. Inflammation leads to a lot of different chronic diseases. Um, so this is my powerhouse, Samantha's super powered signature smoothie. I'm dancing because I'm so <laughs> excited. Dancing the smoothie action. <laughs> now, some people will go, oh my God, are you kidding me? I have to put ginger and yeah. seeds and uh, There's all the seeds thing. here. I'm not completely sold, but we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna be back to learn out why they're so great. And we're back with Samantha Harris and we're making your special Samantha smoothie. Yes. You called it that, so I can call it that. What yes. is all of this stuff? There's well, seeds you were worried and about the seeds. And you were worried about the seeds. So first of all, everything, whether it's how you're changing up your nutrition or your beauty products, it's about small manageable steps. Okay. Small steps. So everything that's here, we're talking about ginger, mm -hmm. chia seeds, 
flax seeds, matcha green tea powder, you, uh, greens powders, wheatgrass mm. powders. You don't have to throw everything. This is my kitchen sink smoothie. I throw <laughs> it all in because I know individually how great and potent each of these items are. Cancer fighters, antioxidants, um, matcha green tea, for instance, great for fighting prostate, for fighting breast cancer. Same with prostate cancer for the chia seeds. Now, you'll notice the chia seeds are in full cheat, chi full cheat. <laughs> the flax seeds are in flax. full seed form. Say that three times fast. Yeah. But in order to actually have them bioavailable, you have to make sure they are either ground prior or really blended. So you need a high powered blender. I will say my smoothie kind of is like blending rocks because of the big There's a lot of frozen stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of frozen stuff. And you stuff. want it and cool. I was doubtful. Yeah, and I was doubtful. I thought, is this going to work? But I trust you. Yes, okay. it, it, it does. It does. It, the sweetness, the berries are fantastic. The more vibrant the color of the berry, or, or any vegetable or fruit for that matter, the better. Organic as much as you can afford. One tip, if your budget is an issue, then you want to look at the Dirty Dozen on the EWG.org yes. website. EWG, Environmental Working Group, they tell you that basically the Dirty Dozen are the, t the 12 most pesticide-heavy produce. And so those are where you really want to put your money for organic. All right. Okay. So let's make this bad boy. Okay. What do I do? I'm your assistant. All right. So uh, we're going to do first, we're going to pour some water in. Okay. Now I make a big enough smoothie that it lasts me pretty much all morning. It really takes me into the afternoon. I do usually about 10 ounces of water uh, to start. Into the afternoon. It's, it's I do have still lunch. Frozen. I still have lunch. Oh no! You I stick it in the fridge. I have a really great um, big smoothie cup oh. that keeps it cold for a long time, and I just sort of sip through the morning. Professional stuff. Yes. Uh, <laughs> very professional. Uh, you know, I'm making sure this isn't spilling. Hello. The, the plant-based protein powder is essential. Now, some of you might prefer whey, and whey protein is okay as long as it's a clean source, grass-fed and organic. But try to get away from animal proteins because there have been studies that have shown that the more animal protein consumption you have, the higher instances of cancer. So, I've heard that. Uh, let's, let's move towards the plant-based protein. Wheatgrass powder, a nice, now this definitely has um, a very gra very intense grassy flavor. So I just do a little touch. It I really helps. Hold on. Let's see, my fingers are super green. You know what? I didn't smell, no. Can't say I'm not a green thumb. You have a green thumb. <laughs> and this does not smell Horrible. as much like grass as I thought it would. <laughs> well, and then so this we're is okay. The greens powder, now greens powders are, are good because they have tons of vitamins and minerals. So the vitamins and minerals are wonderful to get uh, you know, the daily dose that we don't always have. We're still okay. You're still okay, I'm gonna she's yeah, not afraid yet. this after every All right, we've already before. peeled our ginger. Ginger is tremendous. Ginger is great for, obviously, for nausea. It also helps mm -hmm. with like, digestion a lot, but also fighting inflammation. Okay, and you just put the whole thing in there. Uh, That's yep. peeled ginger, peeled by the ginger. way. Peeled ginger, yeah, don't, don't put on it. And we're going to do some chia seeds and flax seeds. So you want to try to aim for one to two tablespoons of flax seed and of chia seed every day. Um, I'll tell you why they are a wonderful addition. They're something you're not going to necessarily have normally uh, by themselves. So they really go on your yogurts, your smoothies. Mm -hmm. The smoothie's great. There are so many great omega-3s with the flax seed oh. and the chia seed and fiber. Okay. So fiber is essential. Want to aim for 30 to 35 grams a day. Um, also, I do your Healthiest Healthy webinars. So anyone who's watching, whether you're in the LA area mm -hmm. or anywhere around the country, you can join my webinar. We talk about food we, for one day. We talk about the beauty products, I detoxing all that, that, and then detoxing relationships. And you're, oh, and you're so much fun. I would I wouldn't spend the day with you. <laughs> okay, and you can actually, at February 21st, for anyone who's seeing this by then, February 21st, I'm doing a one-day retreat here in LA. We're gonna cover all of this. We're also gonna sweat together. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, all right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna oh, yeah. blend this. Yeah, don't forget your greens. Don't forget the greens, and we'll blend this. Hey, and spend. that's it for us. I'm gonna enjoy this. We're gonna wave goodbye. Thank you, Samantha. Right, thank you. Thank Bye, you, Samantha everybody. Smoothie. And we will see you guys next time. All right, we can't wait. All right, we're gonna blend Let's this. Go. Up. Let's go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs>